Hello and welcome to Crown Talk Art here in Western Supermare. Uh, today we are going to have a go at making a giraffe. This is one of my ball giraffes. There he is. So this one's been painted with slip, which is why he's got a pattern on him. He's also had a little bit of an accident with his feet, but I'm going to make sure the one we're going to make today isn't going to have that problem. When he's had his next firing, we'll put a clear glaze on him and he'll be a lot shinier. But for now, he's just patterned like that. So that's what we're going to make. Now, I have got a template for this, which you'll be able to find on my Etsy page. Before you use the template, I would advise you actually stick the pieces onto a piece of cardboard like that and then cut round them. And then you'll have something that's last you a little longer than the, just the paper. It's not a particularly complicated template, but it will help you immensely if you've got all the pieces cut out right. So to start with, because it's a ball construction, or I should say before we start, let's actually let's see what tools we need. So you're going to need some sort of knife, something to smooth your clay with. As you know, I like to use a lollipop stick, a paintbrush, which you're going to use to make the eyes with, a pencil, which we're also going to use to make the eyes with, uh, two guide sticks, five millimetres in thickness that we can use to roll the clay out, and a rolling pin. Now, I previously actually rolled the clay out and cut out my template pieces to that thickness. So, you'll also find it handy to have a bowl of some sort of description. A uh, wooden one is brilliant if you've got one, but if you haven't, don't worry. Uh, any bowl that's got a bit of a curve to it, whether it would be pottery or whether plastic or whatever, doesn't really matter, but you just need that curve to help you to make the ball. If you've watched any of my other ball animal videos, the first part of this is going to be exactly the same as them because I'm going to show you how to make a pinch pot ball. So we have a lump of clay here, it's 350 grams of clay. Um, it's just been taken straight out of the bag and so consequently there'll be holes and air pockets in it. If we try to fire this solid, it's going to explode. So we have to make it a little bit more usable. So get my knife, I'm going to cut it in half. This is not an exact sign, if you don't go exactly in half, don't panic. And then to make the pinch pot ball, I'm going to take one of these lumps of clay, I put it into what my non-dominant hand, so as I'm right-handed that's going to be my left, get my right thumb, push it into the clay till I can feel it pushing against my left hand, but don't go right through, keep my thumb still and move my fingers. So I'm going to do that action all the way around and draw the clay up. You don't want to pinch it as such at this point, it's more a case of stretching the clay out. If you pinch it too much it's just going to flop out. We want nice compact balls. Having gone round once, keeping my firm, hand firmly clenched around it to keep its shape, I now go round it again. This time I'm feeling for where the clay's thick and where the clay's thin. Where it's thicker, I'm pitching it out a little bit. If it's thinner, if it's very thin, I'll push some clay over the top of it. Otherwise we need to get it more or less like that. So we get a little cup like that. We want it again about five millimetres thick. You can go a little thicker if you must, but don't go any thinner. And the reason for the pinching is if there's any air bubbles in here, we are going to take them out. Do the same with the other half. So thumb in, draw the clay all the way round. Like that. Right. And then go round it, pinching it, making it the same thickness everywhere. Again, if I find something that's really thick like that, I do the, the drawing up again. So thin it out that way so that we don't make it go wider. Any places where I can see cracks are forming, I just smooth them in as I go. Making sure here I've got it nice and even and that's, if there's any air trapped in the clay, I've squashed it out. So we've now got two cups like that. Then get our knife and you go round the top of each cup putting cross marks on it, which is called uh, scoring. Right. That one there, same to the other one. This is just to make sure that the, the two pieces will stick together properly. Then I get some liquid clay here, which we call slip, which we use as a glue and paint that round. Again, you might have noticed if you watched any of my other videos how there seems to be a difference in colour between the clay body we're using and the slip. And that is because we're switching between two different types of clay, but they're both the stoneware with the same shrinkage rate. So, and after firing, they're identical. You can't tell the difference. 
Now I've got to get these two together. So I look at my pieces and I think, oh, that goes in a bit, that comes up a bit. So if I put that there and that there, and you'll find it won't be an exact science. If it's a long way difference with the sizes, pull it, stretch it, make it fit. But you'll probably find you've got one or two holes in. Just coax the pieces together like that. So now we've got our potato. We need to turn that into something more stronger. So I get a piece of clay. I'm going to roll out the clay. Again, long rolls, not too much pressure to make a, a sausage or a worm or a coil that I can put round. Do that there. Do it again because it doesn't go quite the way round. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't go right the way round. To start with, just add more bits in. But the aim is where there's any holes like there, we cover them up. And we get our tool and we smooth it down onto the piece. So make notice that I'm going up onto one of the pots like that and down onto the other. Don't be tempted to just smooth it like that. You won't actually make it stick the two pieces together properly. You've got to spread it over them and this is going to create a nice tight seal. Once we finish doing this, we'll have a bubble of air trapped inside, which we can work against. If you find when you're doing this, your piece starts to collapse, it may be that you've actually pinched it a little bit too thin. You might need to redo your pots. Also, don't be too hard on it because until it's sealed, you've not got anything to push against. Once it's sealed, we'll have a bubble of air that we can push, but we haven't at the moment. So I've gone all the way around, sealed it. So now, just with my fingers, and I'm just going to go over these joins, smooth it down a bit, make sure it's sealed. And now I can push against it because I've got that air trapped. If you find when you start to do this that it starts to collapse in your hand, look over it and see if you've got any cracks somewhere that's allowing the air to escape. So I haven't got it joined. Next thing to do now is to start to persuade it to be a bit more like a ball. So we have now a ball, but it's not the prettiest, not the smoothest. So this is where the bowl comes in. So we put it in the bowl and you roll it around in the bowl, the bowl, a little bit of pressure, not too much, don't squash it flat. But again, as I said, you've got that air in there, which will help to give you some resistance. And as you work, you can see it starts to smooth out and become rounder. If when you're doing this, you find you've got sort of areas like that, which are not getting any rounder because they're lower than the surrounding sides, you can get a little bit of clay. Let me step a little closer. A little bit of clay and fill it into the hole. Put some slip on it first so that it'll stick. Smooth it in. Another piece there, so I'm just going to put a little bit of soft clay on there. Work it in. Again, if you also find that your clay is cracking because your hands are too hot, or too dry, it's okay to spray a little bit of water on it, not too much, you don't want it to turn to sludge, but just a tiny bit, and then work it in with your fingers to get it smooth. Now at this point I'm not too concerned about getting it perfect, because we're going to cover up some of this ball with our giraffe bits. But it's another nice, another big hole there, so I'm just going to fill that in with a little bit more clay, dip it in the slip, work it in like that. Go. Let's get it back in the bowl again. Give it another run in the bowl. Okay. We now have our ball. I say it's not perfect, but I can always finish it off later on, smooth it off a little bit more. Next, I need to give him some feet. Now for this, I'm going to need uh, a template, which I can't put my fingers on at the moment. Because that's all good things, I've lost it. But uh, there is a template around somewhere, and what we need to do with it is use it to get this the right width. So this is 70 grams of clay. template there. 
And I want this to be the same size as that shape there. Let me put that out of the way for a minute. So I'm going to roll it, try and get it rather like a, a fat pebble. And this is going to be his legs. I say his, I always call all my sculptures he. Even though this giraffe will probably be a, a lady. So let's check that again. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, but round about that sort of size. So it fit, covers up that circle, but doesn't overlap it too much. Next, I'm going to decide which is the front and the bottom of my giraffe ball here. So if I look at it, that's probably my roughest bit there. So that's going to be the bottom. So I'm going to sit in there for a moment. Get this, score it, add some clay to it, attach it onto that bit. So like that, and I'm going to twist and twist and twist and twist and push it on till it stops moving. At which point, look, there we go, see it starts to slow down. The clay is now bound together. But to make sure that's not going to go anywhere, I'm also going to put a coil of clay around it. This is quite a neat way to make a giraffe because they're really difficult things to try and make look lifelike because they've got a very long, thin neck and a very long set of legs, all of which are really difficult to do in clay. So this is a nice, simple way to do a giraffe. So having done that, Okay, I now got a coil of clay around that. I'm going to push it in, make sure it's in. There's no air trapped there, and then I'm going to smooth it down all the way onto the body and onto what is going to become his legs and feet. So make sure they stay put. Okay. Gently down a bit. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I need to work out where the front of this giraffe is going to be and where the back of the giraffe is going to be. Um, I also want to make sure the ball is pretty much centrally over that point. I'm going to flat it a little bit. So let's have a look. See, I think, I think, I think, I think that I think that's going to be the front. So I'm going to put a little cross to indicate where I'm going to mount the head. Come on, stand up straight. There we go. So that's where the head's going to go. And I need to know that so I can know where to put his feet. So directly down from where the head's going to go, I'm going to put a, a mark in the front of that like that. Then I'm going to cut all the way through that clay down to the body like that. and then do the same there, trying to make sure that I've got these as even as I can. So I've now got four pieces of clay and these are going to be his legs. Now, if you want, if you like it being really neat, you can leave it like that. So that's absolutely fine. I am going to shape mine a little bit, though. So I'm just going to get my fingers in there, round them off a little bit. Don't overdo it. You don't want to make them too thin. Because, as I say, giraffes are a bit of a problem in that respect. And those, these legs are going to have to hold quite a bit of weight with the head and the neck. So. Yeah, like that. And then make sure he stands up. Excellent. So we've got our basic shape. This is the basic shape that we use, or I use, for all of my ball animals. The moment so whether it's a giraffe an elephant a hippo uh, or a zebra that's, that's the ones i'm working on at the moment that's what i'm going for so let's start turning this fella into something more giraffe like so i've cut out some pieces so these two pieces of the neck that's going to be his nose i've weighed out some clay uh, which is 23 gram uh, 23 um yeah 23 grams uh, his head, his nose, his ears, 
its mane. They can all stay there for the moment while we work on the neck. So with this neck, the pointed end is the bottom. And what we have to do is we have to fold it down that centre bit to make it more that shape. So we get a V. And what I'm going to do is that's going to be mounted on the front of the giraffe here. And what I need to do is make sure that it's in line. So you see it's going to come straight up from there. This way it'll keep, it'll keep the balance of the head over the main part of the body and it won't fall on his face. So I haven't decided where that's going to go. I then score along that V. There. Put some slip on it. Mount it in place. Okay, so it's saying, making sure that it goes straight up from the front of the body. There again, make sure it's lined. I'm checking at the moment to make sure it's lined up with the feet because that's going to be the front of the neck. So I want that there. Something like that. Then we put a little bit of clay around it. So again, another little another little worm of clay. Nice and thin. Start there. And a worm up the other side. Up there. Get my tool. And Work that in, so again down onto the body, like that, and up onto the side. Try not to press that in too much, you might have to put your finger inside like that just to make sure that you're not flattening it as you smooth it, which is very easy to do. That in like that. Same on the other side, again keeping my finger there just to support it so that I don't over flatten it. I want to try and keep that V shape at the front. Do as much smooth. I would normally say don't do too much smoothing and messing around at this point but because you're going to seal this up you want to make sure you've got that nice and even as you can manage. Next we put the back of the neck on. You might think hang on a minute that's a bit flat. Yes it is. So what we have to do is like the front we have to fold that also into a V. And then that's going to fit up the back like that. It will be a little bit proud. That's partly because we have to shape it a little bit at the bottom to fit onto the body. But also that's going to provide support for the back of the head. So having done that, got that V-like again. We need to put it on. Before I fix it though, this of course is going to be a huge air cavity in here. Which is going to cause us no end of problems. So we need to make sure the air can escape down into the body and eventually out through the bottom. So I'm going to put my knife in at this point, give it a good turn, either blow in it or get your end of your paintbrush, make sure you're right into that cavity. And then we're going to put a slip on here, up there and up there. And so spread it a little bit at the bottom, but allow it to be a bit proud. And that's going to go on there. Now again, it's going to be quite tricky at this point not to squash your neck too much. So I would suggest having a second lollipop stick that you can put inside to brace it. And again, a little coil of clay, not too big in that crack there. And then while supporting the lollipop stick there with your one hand, make sure you can see, you then spread it down onto the back of the neck, like that, and then up onto the front of the neck like that. Smooth that out. So that's one side. Let's do the same on the other side. Another little coil of clay to go into that crack there. I'll put a little bit of slip on this because it's getting a tiny bit dry. And then again, supporting that so that it doesn't get pushed in. Smooth it down onto both sides. Like that. Try and maintain that neck shape if you can. It's very easy, and in fact, it happened on the one I made there, for that to collapse. So we have our giraffe's neck. Now to put the head on. So we get this lump of clay, 23 gra uh, grams of clay. That's going to go on there, but it is going to need to be a little bit bigger than that before it goes on. 
So what I'm going to do with this is I am going to get the end of my paintbrush into it. It's too salt, too big a lump. It's only just, but too big a lump by itself to actually be fired. So I get that in and then I'm just going to use the paintbrush just to make that lump a little bit bigger just by wiggling it around inside. Like that. And it's just thinning out the clay as, like that, as well as giving us an opening which will allow it to dry better. Again, I'm going to get my bowl. I'm just going to roll it round in the bowl a bit and make it round again. So that will attach to there. So it puts a slip on the neck, making sure that you put the hole at the bottom so the air can escape into the neck of the giraffe. We now tuck it all together. So a little bit of stretching and shaping to get the head in place there. Then we've got to make it stick. So another coil of clay is going to be required. Sorry, just kick the camera. Apologies. So I get some little bit of clay under there. I'm going to smooth that in. Right there. Smooth that in down there. Okay. Smooth the back of the neck up onto the head. Come back there. That's it. Okay. A little bit of shaping. Around, do the same on the other side. A little bit of clay in there. Like that. Oh, clean the tool. Get in there. Like that and that. There. And you see how I'm shaping it into like a, a triangle leading up to the top. Like that. Just going to put a little bit of coil under the neck here. Make sure my head stays attached. Okay. Okay. Next thing to do is give him a nose. Uh, hang on, he's cool. tilting to one side. Let's just persuade him to stand up straight. It's better. Okay. I'm just shaping that in a little bit, make sure it's a nice, nice triangular line there. So this is his nose. So we're going to fold this in half. I'm going to put some slip up the inside of that. I'm going to try anyway. Let's get a little bit there. And then I'm going to push that together. So again, be careful not to trap any air in it. But push it together to make like a little round shape like that. Now one end is very slightly bigger than the other. And that's the end that's going to go onto his head. Uh, so I now need to decide at this point what I want to pose I want him to have. And I'm thinking this one, I'm going to have him looking a little bit over his shoulder. So having decided that, I get my knife. I score the thick end of this lump of clay. Put a drop of slip on it put it onto the head and we screw it again till it stops moving. I get my tool again. Now you notice this particular lollipop stick I'm using here. I have actually cut the ends to make a, a point which allows you to get into small areas. Just did that with a pair of scissors, nothing special, and then filed it off. If you've got sandpaper, great. If not, an emery board works just as well to make a little sand, a little bit of sanding. So it's just, I'm just putting a tiny little bit of clay in there to merge it down onto his nose, or her nose, like that. Just smooth out the end a bit. Okay. Then again, underneath, I'm going to choose the pointed end of this just to smooth that clay in. Next thing I'm going to give this giraffe is its ears. So I've cut out the triangles, uh, the diamond shapes, to make two ears. And it's up to you which end you, you actually want to use, whether you want to use one end slightly bigger than the other. I'm going to do these this way around. When you've decided, just nip off the point of the ear, like that. 
make them fit better. A little bit of slip on it. Again, not too much, just a little bit. I'm not going to worry about scoring these. They're so small, it's not going to make any difference. You put them on, so they're either side of the head. When you do this, make sure you're looking at your giraffe straight on, so you put his ears on straight. So regardless of where the body is, make sure the head's looking at you. It will look a little bit pig-like at this point. Don't panic. It'll all come right in the end. Then round the back, I am going to put, again, a tiny little bit of clay in. Just a little sliver of clay at the back of the ear there. I'm going to use my pointy tool here, again, to just work that in to the head and up onto the ear. And then the same over here on the other side of the, the other ear. I'm going to have to make a modification here because it's not designed to be looking over his shoulder. I can see that because his neck's not all straight. Let's put your head round a little bit more like that. As we go. Like that. That's better. Okay. And just smooth that in. So what I've done is I've twisted it because his head's not pointing straight out in front. I needed to adjust it so that his spine follows his head. Otherwise, it's a bit weird. Okay, so we fix that on. Turn it round. Do the same at the front. Just get your. I'm going to get the rounded end, and I'm just going to smooth some of that clay out of the ear. And that's this allows us to give the ear a little bit of a more of a ear-like effect. And then just get my thumb in there, just tidy it up a bit. Same there. Smooth it in like that. There we go. Next thing, I'm going to add his, well, I say the word loosely, his horns. In fact, giraffes don't have horns. They have something called ossicones. When they're born, the ossicones are not attached to the head and they're made of cartilage, a bit like fingernails. It allows the baby giraffe to be born without doing its mummy any damage. As they grow, they become attached to the skull and then turn into bone. So, depending upon whether it's a male or a female, depends on how big the ossicones are. This is going to be a female, so I'm going to have fairly small ossicones. Right so then again, dip it in the slip. Put one just above the ear there. Again, wiggle it and wiggle it, wiggle it, it stops moving. Same on the other side. There. Wiggle and wiggle and wiggle. So it stops moving. Okay. I'm just going to turn around now. Again, use this. I'm just going to smooth it in at the back. Make sure I'm not going to go anywhere. Like that. And then smooth them in at the front after I've done that. Never meant. Because I've done that twisting motion, that will stop them from falling off anyway. This is just tidying them up, making sure they really are not going to go anywhere. So turn around, make sure they're smoothed in at the front a bit, nice and tidy. Right. That. right. Next thing this little lady needs is some eyes. So I'm going to get my paintbrush here. So reasonably thick end on it. And this is a fairly sort of standard paintbrush. Uh, and what I'm going to do is in line with the snout, between the snout and the ears, I'm going to put just a little marker there and a little marker there. Now, again, these are not accurately depictions of giraffes. So if you actually look at a giraffe face, it's not quite like these, but we're going for a sort of comedic effect rather than accurate. So having worked out where my eyes are going to go, I'm going to make another make a hole there and a hole there. Before you make your holes it's always a good idea to make sure you're looking straight at your giraffe so you've got your eyes at the same level you want them the same level that way but also look down on it from above and make sure you've got the same you've got them the same distance there as well. So that's fine I'm going to make those slightly bigger so I'm just going to put my paintbrush in wiggle them around a bit make them a little bit bigger not too much. So I need to go back to that one like that. Now I'm going to add some eyes. And what I do with the eyes is, again, I start with a little bit of clay, roll it into a ball, 
see whether it's about sort of the right size. That's a little bit big, so I'm going to cut that down again. Roll it. I'm actually going to make two eyeballs out of this. I like to make things in pairs. That way you end up with things being more or less the same size. So, yeah. so I make it so it looks like it would fit in and then cut it in half. Up. As best as you can. Roll it in my hand. Now before I go any further, my hands are pretty dusty, so I'm going to put a bit of water on them and then I'm going to dry them because I want clean hands for this. So that when I roll it, I'm not picking up any other clay dust. You want your eyeballs to be nice and smooth. You don't really want them with bits of dust attached to them. Let's roll them up. So we should have two about the same size. So I feel that one is actually very slightly larger than the other, but only by a tiny bit, but I'm gonna nip a bit off it. Like that, try not to lose the other eyeball. Okay. Right, so yeah, they feel about right. So I'll check them, make sure they're smooth and I'm happy with them. Then there's a bit here that's cracked, so I'm going to put that at the back. I'm going to put a dab of, a dab of slip on it and drop the eyeball into the socket like that. And do the same on the other side. That's going to go in there. Okay, drop that into the socket like that. And I'm going to use the end of the pencil at this point to actually give him some pupils on his eyes. And I'm, at the moment, the ones I'm making, I'm going for the look of being completely confused. So I'm actually going to give him slightly cross-eyed eyes. I'm going to put one hole in there. Up. And one hole in there, like that. So we have a very confused looking giraffe, which I'm not surprised considering how fat he is. She is. Okay. Next, we're going to do her nose. Their noses are just basically just like that. In fact, where I put the two, where I folded in half, I've still got a little bit of a line there, but that's okay. I can use that to make give them a smile if I want to. So I'm going to give her a smile up there. Like that. Let's just deepen that. As I say, these can be as fucky, funky or as weird as you like. Let's try and make her smile the same on the other side now, though. There we go. Very happy looking giraffe. Next, I checked her over, made sure her feet are still intact. Because, of course, we've been putting weight on these, so I need to check that the, the joins are still good. And they're not too creased up. You can see where they've gone out of shape a little bit with the weight. But she is now going to need tail. Most African animals seem to have a tail that's ended with a very stiff brush on it to deal with the biting flies. So give her a tail like that. Put some slip on it. So there's no template for the tail. It's just a, just a coil of clay stuck on. And then a little bit of clay over the top of the, the base just to make sure it stays put. Again, paint some slip on that. Oh dear, the sun's come out. <laughs> Suddenly we can't see properly because we're backlit. Okay, so hopefully you can still see enough to see what's going on. So that's better. The sun's going in again now. Typical British spring. One minute the sun's shining, the next minute it's chucking it down with rain. At the moment, there we go. See what we're doing again now. So we'll fix that on there. And I'm going to give a little twist at the end of her tail and put the little brushy bit on. So she can keep the flies at bay. That. She also needs to have a mane, so I've got a template piece for that, which I've cut. And I'm going to go score down it. Like that. Put some slip on it. Again. So thickest bit's going to go at the bottom, thinnest bit at the top. It's going to go on the back of the neck like that, following the neck round. And then again, get your tool, work that onto the neck. Like that. Okay. On both sides, make sure it's on properly. 
interestingly, but probably useless facts, a lot of you know that actually giraffes have exactly the same number of bones in their neck as we do. They're just very much bigger. Okay, now I'm going to make it more mane like. So I'm going to just run my knife along it, buff it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more like fur. That side, turn it over, do the same on the other side. Make sure you can all see despite the sunshine coming out. And now we come down to the, the smoothing and tidying and all the rest of it that we feel we need to do. If you find that you're struggling to get things smooth, don't forget to wash your fingers and then dry them. So you have some clean fingers and you'll find that makes life so much easier when it comes to smoothing things out. Okay, so this is where I spend a little bit more time now just polishing off the surface of the clay. Making sure I get all the lumps and bumps. Make sure the legs are straight. And of course at this point if you want to give us some hooves. You have like a like that if you want to. Okay, and then the very last thing, do not forget before you if you intend to fire this, is to make sure that air which is in the head and the neck goes into the body can escape. So we turn it upside down. And the cross between the legs, stick your knife in, give it a good twist, make sure it goes right through, check it with a paintbrush if necessary, or blow in it, and that's it. Now at the moment she doesn't look very much like a giraffe, but by the time you've painted it, like this one, it will start to come together and look a lot more giraffe-like. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, I will put the template up on Etsy as soon as I can, and uh, look forward to catching you for another make soon. Bye.